I'll do my best to try and keep this review fairly brief. Let's aim for like seven minutes. So one thing I would like to note that I, I actually find kind of funny is whenever you have like a popular series, they get paired up with another one. There's always one that they could just get compared to. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Fairy Tail. It always gets compared to One Piece, Naruto to Bleach, uh, Black Clover to My Hero Academia. With Attack on Titan, I always see it compared to Tokyo Ghoul. And one thing I just, I find extremely amusing, despite like any parts where you can say, you know, something about Kaneki or something about Eren, is both of them in their endgame turn into these giant kaiju versions of their powers. And like, Kaneki turned into like the big, weird eyeball tower flesh creature and, and Aaron turned into this massive like skeletal uh, I, I almost want to say centipede it's the old skeletal creature and then have the slowest apocalypse I have ever seen the slowest apocalypse I swear and I, I don't mean that in a hate way I absolutely don't mean that in any way I like it I hate on attack on Titan. it's just to me it it lowers some of the tension because when, when you have something like this, one of these massive hype moments where it's like, oh shit, all this big stuff is going down. You have absolutely like something insane, like, you know, Aaron, like I said, turning into a giant skeletal creature, breaking all the walls and sending the colossal titans out of the world. That's like when you're in a watch, if you're like watching a movie and, you know, it gets to the, the, the big climactic finale. This is where everything beyond this is, is nothing but what you've been waiting for hype time it's just a ride at that point of of emotions and absolute like chaos the same thing that happened with tokyo ghoul with air with uh kaneki is like the same thing though happening with Aaron and uh in attack on titan it's like it happens and you're like oh look at all this insanity like you know uh, kaneki turning the centipede and scaling the building and uh, skyscraper Aaron, you know, breaking the walls, sending out visions and, and messages to all the different Eldians. And I'm just like, oh man, I can't wait for uh, to see how this all goes down. It's probably gonna be crazy. And then it's been really slow. I was happy to see Levi. I didn't think Levi died. I absolutely didn't think Levi died. Levi's one of those characters who I don't think he's invincible. I personally just didn't think he was ever gonna get killed off. I think he's both too light and then, you know, the, the whole Ackerman, like they're, they're pretty much superhuman. So we couldn't really, uh, we, we couldn't really go into this whole idea of him you know, dying by a normal human means. Obviously any normal human from that would have died, but as an Ackerman, that can not only is his body stronger, but it showed that he kind of had like a defense against it. It looks like he jumped back a little bit and then used uh, his sword to block the explosion, which again, makes sense of how fast he is, you know, how, uh, how absolutely like, I'd say just like combat experienced and uh, quick witted he is. So uh, to me, I find that very, uh, very believable, very like understandable, knowing like all the stuff he's done. Because Levi is like a cut above the rest. So him specifically, like if this was just some random character, I'd be like, I don't know if I uh, if I could see them doing it. Levi believable. But then you got him and uh, is it Hange or Hange? I actually still don't know how it's pronounced. If you know if you. You know just tell me in the comments i'm very confused on, on that one i i've been switching since like i started reading the series and I, I i don't know i just never looked into it i just call her hangi I, I i feel like it's hanj all the names are supposed to be german right i don't know either way she's like just discussing with uh you know with, with them what's going on and, and, and going with you know uh we, we gotta figure out like what we need to do no, uh, we have no choice. We got to leave it to like Armin and Pixis. We don't know what Eren's doing with Zeke. Maybe he'll betray him. But the, the Jaegerists are too powerful. And as long as they control the island with spinal fluid, then uh, they're going to be wanted. And so this is a, like a whole dangerous layout for them. And personally, like the worry, as long as uh, as long as Levi like has his limbs, he's he just as he recovers, I imagine he'd be fine. And then, you know, he, him as a one man army, pretty much. I think they'd still have a good chance of fighting back because he doesn't fall into a lot of the the bigger things that like messes with uh some of these other characters like you know the ability to turn them into titans and and whatnot whereas like him as an ackerman and, like, it wouldn't surprise me like it's him specifically if you know healed up he would be able to go in and you know pretty much start taking people down just in mass the only one that would probably in my opinion the only people that would be a threat to him 
be Eren, just because how powerful Eren is now, but also uh, Mikasa, but I don't really know why Mikasa would go against Levi. And even though she's an Ackerman, I still think that she is a, a good step below Levi. I mean, he's just extremely powerful. But while, uh, while getting all these things picked up, and I'm guessing she, you know, you know, she's like making the, the wheelchair and then, right, well, and I can't say I guess. I mean, it was literally making like a little cart, I guess. I guess it's not a wheelchair. It's just a little wagon. But while doing it, it has the vision where Aaron talks to everybody. I like that it wasn't like vision you hear all the same things it was just like it, you're in it flash flash out and it, it just showed like how fast it went by but all the information process at the same time i did really like how that was presented i thought that was done really well without having to recap all this stuff oh god i'm not even gonna get close to the seven minutes i'll, I'll go a little bit faster but there now that uh uh Hongen knows everything that's going on levi seems to be all right enough to talk but he's still injured he wants to go after the beast titan again he wants to kill zeke that's like his primary goal now i wonder if he should leave it like the scar look or he should get an eye patch just on the, on the idea of it but it looks like he's relatively gonna be all right i mean he, he's missing some fingers but it's not like he's missing a whole limb okay I imagine he'd still be able to you know, grip onto his sword even with the three fingers. I mean, they could probably make a prosthetic or even like a custom sword that is like just a, a way for him to hold it. it, it it's one of those things where, like I said, even with three fingers, I, I fully believe he'd be able to grip one of those swords just fine. But that's just because he's Levi. I mean, it's believable knowing exactly what he's capable of. But then you get the you get the meeting up with some of the other characters or talking about you know going and get zeke they need to combine their powers in order to take them down and then it's nightfall and the, the colossal titans are still moving they're still going out I, I i keep saying like it it's the slowest apocalypse ever and i believe that like if you were in this situation where you know all that you saw all these colossal titans like just walking and knowing how long it's taking them you could probably go and find somewhere underground to hide or just look for an opening and ride between them. It doesn't look like they're just doing anything other than just dead eyed looking forward and walking. So I, I don't really see like how in terms of a speed that's like it's a threat. They're obviously like a big dominating force, but they're so slow that it, it wouldn't even like it wouldn't surprise me if some guy just you know got on a horse and rode through them and then just was you know safe behind them it's like how did you survive the rumbling it's like like well, i went behind them and they never came back it's like every couple every couple weeks you know they, they pass by and all you gotta do is just not get stepped on and then get on the opposite end of them and you're good but and you get back to the connie and falco stuff i don't like the connie and falco plot i i I understand that Connie is a character that's been, you know, in the start of the, since the, the start of the series. I understand the whole thing about his mom, you know, it, it's related to him and then the whole stuff with Falco, like he obviously wants to try and rescue his mom. I can get that. I don't deny that it's a plot point. I think that it's, it's a really weird shift in the plot. And um, it's like, uh, I, I'm trying to think of just like a thing to compare it to just a, a series that probably everyone listening is is knowing about uh i can go naruto I, I think i've used that one a little b before it'd be like oh hey you know you got madara and uh and uh, nobito and they're about to use the infinite Tsukiyomi. it's like they get everything up that's like one step away and then it's like hey remember that guy that naruto fought in chapter one i don't remember his name i just remember the anime turned him into tony the tiger but remember that guy well he's doing stuff and then they want to just like oh he's trying to steal the ninja scroll again and it's like well I can understand that that was a thing, but is this the time for it? It's weird to me. And then you see, it's like, oh, he's, I, I've come to brush my mom's teeth. Do you want to help? Get right above her mouth and hang on a hang on a, a beam and do it. It's That was like straight Bugs Bunny level of, of seriousness. That was goofy as hell. That is legitimately like, hey, man, I'm going to go floss the shark's teeth. It's like, no, why would you? That doesn't make sense. Hey guys, there's this hungry crocodile. I'm gonna get in there and, and you know, I, I'm pretty sure he has a, you know, he's got a popcorn kernel wedged between some of them. Let's go pull it out. Just crawl on in there. And I'm, I, I had to laugh just because I, I thought that that's, it was so goofy in the idea behind it. I, it. It's literally like, hey man, what's down the barrel of this gun? Do you see what that is? And then some dude looks and gets shot. It's like, you, you what? No, that's goofy. You have Armin Shop who, seems to be like ready to sacrifice himself and uh he's like saying like you know uh listen man i i don't really um 
I don't know if uh, what we're going with, but let me just show you. And he looks like he's ready to, if needed, like die. And I'm like, I don't, I can't really tell if Armin was serious or he knew that Connie was going to do something about it, which I actually thought was pretty interesting from Armin's perspective and Armin's character. I do think Armin's interesting. I think he's like, a, even though he's like a primary member of the series, his level of, I gotta say, his like level of like uh, plot weight and like where he's uh, utilized, it always feels underwhelming for me. And not in a bad way. It, it's like he's important, but he doesn't get to do as many things as he should be doing. Like he's not only extremely intelligent, he's not only one of the, what I would say the primary three characters of the series, but he's also got the Colossal Titan's power. And I mean, it's like he should be way more like prevalent. He should be like a, you know, turning it uh well i guess he can't fight aaron but i mean he could just still do something like colossal tighten up and you know um, maybe push back in some of the areas maybe shield some of these people uh, to help try and take down aaron and you get all the jaegers going around going crazy any you know just being any and the characters now aren't like doing the what we would imagine logically they're all teaming up they're all putting their skills together and you got that you know they're all they they went and talked to, to reiner and like we're gonna combine everything and combine all of our abilities we're grouping back up we have to save the world let's do this and again i don't, I don't really know if i agree with them i mean i i kind of like think that they should just let aaron do his thing and then maybe take him down afterwards so he doesn't become kind of like overly crazy and it's like we'll re reset the world after this point let's just call it good i don't know it like i said i don't have a lot to say about this one it was mostly just set up and I found the Connie stuff to be really goofy. But other than that, comment below. Tell me your thoughts are about this chapter. Tell me your thoughts are about what's going on. I, I want to see some crazy world ending stuff. Like I, we're, We should be in the, the, the absolute hype train like ride of the series. But it hasn't felt like that for a little bit. But other than that, comment below. Thumbs up the video. Put the like button. Subscribe button. And check out my other videos. But I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. I thank you all for listening. Bye.